Hi everyone, my name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And today, YouTube, the community, lost somebody. And that would be Etika. If you don't know that story, I recommend you take a look into it because it's been impacting a lot of people. A lot of people are upset. This is a guy who had a very interesting presence here on YouTube. He was a well-known, well-beloved figure who succumbed to mental illness and unfortunately took his own life. It was speculated for days that that was going to be the case. And then this morning we got full on confirmation. This isn't a video about that. I wanted to talk to you guys today about the subject of mental health and YouTube and why finding your passion is important and maintaining it. I can only speak to my own experiences. And if I just want to sit there and kind of put this as an outreach, if you are suffering from some similar things, I, you know, those, those, those terrible, terrible thoughts, uh, I, I urge you to, to seek out help. So let me tell you my story. I've been doing YouTube uh, full time for four years. And as I'm sure you are aware by watching a lot of other people, that it's not the most easy job on the planet, right? It looks easy. Sit here in front of a camera, talk about stuff. How hard could that potentially be? It's not the job itself that's the hard part. It's the isolationism that comes from it. It's a very isolating job. I'm here alone right now. My girlfriend's at work. My child is asleep. And when they go to bed, I'll probably be back here working because that's what I do roughly seven days a week. I don't take time off. I don't take breaks. I work because quite frankly, how I want to be on this platform requires me to do more than just trace the late chase the latest outrage. I'm not saying I've never done it. There are certain things that do bug me that I talk about that bug other people and ends up getting attention. But after a while, it just becomes this massively degrading situation I find myself in, mentally speaking. Why would I want to dedicate so much of my life? The one thing I have that is not in abundance of probably is time. It's the one resource you'll never get back. Why do I want to chase anger? You know, like that's how I per personally view it. Other people... Different story. I can only speak about me. And this job gets difficult to keep going at times. There's been times I've wanted to quit. There's been times I've wanted to walk away. There's been times I've gotten so frustrated at the platform and the way things are that I had some very dark thoughts. Specifically a couple of years ago. About two years ago this month, to be honest with you, I just bought my home. Uh, the apocalypse had just started. I was disillusioned with a large portion of YouTube from my other channel simply because I didn't want to engage in negative politicking the entire time. And so I created Three Buck Theater as an outlet. And there was a time in April 2017 where I had said, I'm going to stop doing politics on, on, on the other channel and just do movies. And you know what? I probably should have stuck to that. But I was so afraid of, of losing what I had. Because I dedicated so much of myself to building it up. Because that's what it requires of you. If you want to be successful on this platform, you have to do it almost every day. If you ask yourself why I put out so much content, it's literally because that's how it has to be. I cover the news. The news is always shifting. Some things do well, some things don't. You pick another story the next day, you move on. You may have noticed the, earlier this morning, I put out a WTF Happened video about Hellboy 2019. I sat down last night and wanted to work on that. Why? Because it brought me joy to work on that, to, to do a deep dive into a project, to not just look at a news article, look at a, a piece of information, and then talk about it. doesn't mean I don't enjoy that because I do, but there's like, it. there's no creativity behind it, essentially. 
And that can wear on you is what I'm trying to get to. That, that can really, really wear on you. So a couple of years ago, I, I just, I kept having really bad thoughts. I was scared, going to be a first time father, uh, having all this responsibility, maintaining a mortgage. My girlfriend is trying to find work. Everything kind of fell on my shoulders. I was losing 65% of my income and working twice as hard. It starts to really, really wear on you. Thankfully, things have evened themselves out to an extent, or I've just been able to learn to live with what I, what I don't have anymore. 2016 was a great year and that hurt a lot of people with what happened in 2017, but it's not the point. This world, this space consumes you. It a hundred percent consumes you and that's fine. I like it. I like what I do, but there's a downside to it. And that's what a lot of YouTubers face. A lot of YouTubers are fundamentally mentally broken people. Not to say that they're bad or that they're that they're in the position to hurt themselves, but they they are angry and they're frustrated and they they complain to each other because it's the system itself is always changing and YouTube doesn't communicate that. So imagine you know, like you just you do it's the unknown that really hurts it. Never mind the near constant harassment some creators face on this platform. Uh, there's always going to be a level of criticism, but it's gotten ugly and nasty in the last couple of years. Really ugly, really nasty in the last couple of years. I mean, we're we're looking at uh, you know channels that that go after celebrities uh, because they look the wrong way during a press interview, and they tell them uh, you know they call them the c word, and they 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 say all these terrible, horrible, nasty things about this person. They don't know. They don't know they, that's, you know what I mean? Like it's become just this, this terrible, nasty thing. And I don't watch that content. I've just, I've moved on from that content. I, I just cannot do it. It's not how I want to spend the time I have. You may like it. That's entirely up to you. But in about a year ago, about a year ago, um, you know, I kind of hit this point where I was getting frustrated again. I was getting ticked off again. And I wasn't giving myself an out. I wasn't giving myself any kind of outlet. I was just throwing myself further and further into work and getting further and further frustrated. And as a result of that, I realized that I needed to seek help, that I needed to go and talk to somebody. And since then, I've, uh, since August of last year, uh, I have been in therapy and it really does help. It really, really does help. Uh, those bad thoughts I was having, I'm not having them anymore. Uh, my desire to continue to put out content is still there because I'm very passionate about what I do because movies are my passion. Movies are something I genuinely love. I love gushing about things I like and I like this kind of stuff. And I'm very thankful that I get to do this as a career. I love what I do. I get more frustrated at YouTube as a platform than anything else, but not you guys. You guys are cool. You guys help keep me sane and help keep me focused, by the way. So for that, I am eternally grateful. You have no idea that despite a lot of other stuff that's happened, I can count on you guys and that makes it all the better to be fair. And the reason why I'm sharing this story is because I want you to know that if you're feeling the same way I felt, or perhaps Etika felt there is help available. It's there's no shame in getting therapy. There's no shame and in, in admitting that you are not okay. There's no shame in wanting to get better. And if anyone tries to do that, then they are just wrong. Point blank. Full stop. Wrong. If you feel like you're not okay, and you don't know exactly the feeling, but it's this little 
nagging sensation in the back of your head. It's this little weird thing in the back of your mind. This, this, this moment of doubt and this, this, this constant questioning of who you are. I do it all the time. I have a, I have a major problem with that last night, even doing that Hellboy video. I had this idea because of how my mind works, how I wanted to, how I wanted to frame my process. And then about halfway through that doubt sets in, right? That doubt. And I, and I, I will overanalyze everything. My girlfriend hates me for that. I overanalyze everything. I'm that jerk you that all the YouTube employees hates because I ask all the questions because I like to know, but I start overanalyzing how I'm doing it and the way that I, I, I structured the whole process was to allow me to not have that problem, but it still crept in. And it was very difficult for me at like two o'clock in the morning to fight through it, being very tired to fight through it, to finish, because that's how you get past that kind of stuff. That's how I can. I don't know how you do it. You could do it differently and that's all good. The key is that you do it. If you feel like you are not okay, please get help. Please reach out to somebody. It doesn't matter who it is. Reach out to somebody and talk to them. There are hotlines available to help you out. You have your friends and your family. And if you feel isolated from even them, then you have random people on the internet that I'm sure will hear you out. But please remember that no matter what, you are valuable, you are loved, you are wanted, and you should be here. And that's what I wanted to say in this video. Give you guys a bit of my story, where I've been at mentally, what I've been trying to do to get better. And then to remind you that you are a person and you have value and self-worth. That you are loved and you are cared for. And that you're wanted. Anyway, be safe, be kind to one another, and we can all get through this together because that's quite frankly, the only way you're going to survive life is together. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Um, have a great day and uh, peace out.